Welcome. Welcome to the show that is so bad it's not even on the ABC. <laughs> That's right. Now, <laughs> actually, no, I've got to think of our guests that we have on. Uh, they do a lot of work for a lot of networks, and, and we're all one big happy family. Uh, <laughs> Even, even the community channels. Um, <laughs> on tonight's show, we, I've got Master Impressionist Keith... Master imp Impression... Uh, he, he does impressions. <laughs> Keith Scott will be on the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and also the movie guy, you know him as the movie guy from uh, radio and TV. Mark Fennell will also be here <laughs> talking with us. Tonight's show, coming up. It's all right, it's all right. Hey, I, I, he, he, has, he doesn't watch a lot of TV. He watches movies, all right? So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mark Fennell. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, you're the only person that's come out twice on this show. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mom and my dad and my Good friends on you. Dora <laughs> Right, now, you, uh, you being a, a movie guy, and that's what a lot of people know you as, the movie guy from yep. uh, Triple J, or, uh, yeah, Triple J, and the host of The Feed on SBS. I feel, like I'm ba I feel bad I've made you read out my, my LinkedIn profile. Is it, you, <laughs> are you that serious about your business? You have a LinkedIn profile? I, you know what? LinkedIn actually does serve a purpose. Sometimes I, I use it to contact people that I want to interview. Ah, uh, yeah. I know that sounds hey, weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We started with LinkedIn material. This is going well, right? No. <laughs> you know how, how I tried to get uh, people on my show? Yeah. Uh, Twitter. Twitter? Yep. I thought he was... I so thought he was about to say Grinder. I really... <laughs> it was like... It was like... Cockpit, cockpit, come on my show! <laughs> Which I would have totally, I would have 100% done. I really would have, if I were on Grindr. Yeah, righto, whatever. <laughs> Swiping left. <laughs> to, to, to watch movies and get paid to, and, and to get free tickets mm. um, is the main thing, because, man, they're expensive to go to in our movies. They but uh, to, to, to do that and get paid, it's got to be, it, no, it be is, nice. It is a great gig, and it's, it's really fun. And, and I think some film critics don't really, really respect it, because they do get free tickets. I will say, though, that the one thing that most people don't realise is that, in addition to all the good movies, is the shit. Yeah. There is a spectacular amount of shit that comes yes. out in cinemas. And, I know. and you know, I often, I often joke that I'm like the guy that gives three and a half stars to things, but that's only because if I went any lower, it would cause me physical pain. So yeah. I, I, as good as being a film critic is, it is fun, you get to see movies, you get to interview movie stars, you get to write books, but you do have to suffer through like, Adam Sandler's 13th film about being a Mexican. I'm like, oh my God, the self-harm. Let's just kill me now. Yeah, and congratulations too, because I hear you have another baby on the way. Yes, yes. I mean, I... you don't, uh, no, but to your... No, this isn't no, no, the baby. You, you this could is just do. like years of like eating burgers. Is you that... could do, you could do. Oh. But uh, you, you've oh. got one, one already. Yes. Uh, very no. young too. Yeah, he's two. It's funny, because I, on the topic of movies, because the new Star Wars movie was coming out, I thought, Two. Yeah, you can watch a movie. Sat him down in front of Star Wars, and it's really fascinating watching a, a, a toddler watch the original Star Wars, because the moment it stopped being about the droids, yeah. he's like, I don't care. And walks, <laughs> toddles away, he's like, I'm going to find me some toys. When I was a kid, right, I, I'd, I'd go watch the movies, yes. and then I would come out and I'd usually buy the soundtrack to the movie, right? I used to do that too. I didn't Did have you? a single piece of music until I was 16 that I'm, wasn't movie related. I'm going to see if you've got the same sort of taste. <laughs> Right? I, in my mind, we've jumped back to the grinder profile. No. <laughs> no. No. Well, th well, this is an easy one that, that a lot of, lot of people might have. I, I, I got that one there. Oh, wow. See? See, this yeah. is what they should make the, the posters to the new movies look like. I love that retro, the whole retro look. The, the artwork is awesome. Like, yes. That, the Clap art. the vinyl cover. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember when album artwork wasn't this tiny thing you saw on an iPhone? It was like, it's yeah. big, it's glorious. I got uh, 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 that one there after seeing that. Can, uh, can, can you do the falsetto of Holiday Road? Holiday Road. 
can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. But uh, yeah, it's weird. It's, 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 that's an album with uh, one good song. <laughs> uh, I bet you no one in the world's got this one. Oh. What? Hey, the cool and get a gold. This is it. Yeah. Is this in your book? No, but can we get a clearer sense of his grinder profile? <laughs> I love that this has become a recurring thing. That you it, started. Yeah, on the back you've just like Colin Friel's in, in, in full Baywatch mode. It's great. Yeah. But I yeah. don't know I don't know your capacity for close-ups given I've already destroyed the set, but uh yeah, no, don't worry, they don't need to see a close-up of that. But no, 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 that's for your own personal have enjoyment. A look, look, look who's on there, man. There's John English and... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I don't know why I got that one. Now, your book, though... <laughs> is, I'm, see, my, my taste in movies has changed. Uh, now, your book, though, The Planet According to Movies, which the cool and gutter gold, I guess, is not in. You know what? There's always, there's always time for a reprint, you know? Uh -huh. we've, got, we've got the opportunity to fix that. So, so tell us about the book, uh, the, the, the Planet... Uh, what is it, the planet according to the movies? Uh, Basically, it's for people that like to travel the world but have no money and also are sedentary and don't want to leave the couch. So the idea is each chapter takes you to a different country of the world and we pick four movies about that country. So once you've watched those four movies, you really don't need to go there anymore because it's done. <laughs> but wouldn't you want to go to the movies where the locations are? I was fascinated by this idea of, of you know, what do movies say about countries? Mm. And it gets, it can get really fun. So it, it, particularly in countries where there are, you know, have like really big film cultures like Japan, where they have anime and Godzilla movies. I literally just picked something that was uniquely Japanese and Japan has this really interesting subgenre that only exists in Japan and that's of Movies where they have a totally normal story, but one of the characters is a giant stuffed animal. <laughs> and they play it completely straight. So, Calamari Wrestler is my favourite. It's just like, it's like basically Rocky, except Rocky is a crustacean. And you won't find that, and that's the fun stuff. Like, the fun stuff about writing a book like this is when you get to find movies that you may or may not necessarily want to watch, but my God, they're fun to write about. And so it's also taking a little bit the piss, but also looking at how... There are movies like that, though, aren't there, that are so bad they're good. Oh, yeah, actually, the weird thing about that movie is actually it isn't bad. Is there, is there a chapter in here on Australia, then, when you're looking at the world? There is, and I wanted to do a chapter... Uh, there, there wasn't until very late in writing the book when I just realised I'm making all these jokes about other countries, and if I don't write about Australia, it's going to come across as super racist. So, Which is fine, because I'm brown, and you can say what the f*** you want. That's what they tell you at SBS. You're brown. No one knows where you're from. It's fine. You can say what you want. Uh, with Australia, uh, I picked, I picked Australian accents. Movies where, the, the movies where different uh, actors from around the world had attempted Australian accents uh, in descending order of, of crapness. Yeah. And Robert Downey Jr. is fascinating because he manages to fit both at the top and the bottom of the spectrum. Oh yeah. So if you see Natural Born Killers, genuinely one of the worst Australian accents ever attempted by an American actor. And he actually based it on this, uh, he plays a tabloid journo following these serial killers. He based it on a real Australian that Rupert Murdoch sent over to New York to okay. kind of start up tabloid TV. But then you fast forward to Tropic Thunder and he's basically playing Russell Crowe yeah. and he does it really well. So yeah. different, different actors attempt, attempting the Australian accent and why the Australian accent is so hard for Americans. Mm. It is, isn't it? They just, uh, we, I think because, uh, because we hear so many accents from around the world anyway, yeah. we, we, we're tuned in straight away. But they don't even make the effort to want to learn and they're like, huh? Huh? What? And it's it, hard this, though. Yeah. Like if you, I remember <laughs> I was in America not that long ago and uh, I, was, I was there to interview somebody and I was staying at the hotel and they just don't process what Australians are. Like, we, they think all Australians are Chris Hemsworth, right? <laughs> so I'm sitting in this, in this hotel and this lovely, like, really sweet 21-year-old super camp Puerto Rican bellboy comes down and he's like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Australia. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, my God, I had no idea they let Aborigines travel. <laughs> I'm, like, I, I'm not, but... It's fascinating that your, your image of who Australians are, particularly given that he was Puerto Rican, we got into a conversation, that's how I found out he was Puerto Rican, particularly given that like America, 40% of America is not white, the fact that he didn't process that Australia might also maybe have not white people was like groundbreaking to him. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. That's why we've we got, we got to get out there more and uh, let the world know where we are. Mm, we and, have tans. And, and who we are. That's what we've got to do. All right, we're going to take a, a quick break. We'll be back with more of Mark Fennell after the break. <laughs> Yeah, 
Man, this is this is this has gone very all of a sudden very American here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, here we have uh, Mark Fennell, uh, author of Planet According to uh, the Movies. But uh, now you had a, a many opportunities to interview some probably world famous people. Uh -huh. uh, which again, you know, some people get envious out there. I I'm not one of them. Um, <laughs> no, but you know, you, 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 go from, you go from Harrison Ford to uh, 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 other people. <laughs> uh, After you've no, done no, Harrison, no, no, no one counts. No, no, I was, I was thinking too, like the Star Trek thing, because I saw recently online last year you. you uh, uh, Mr. Zulu or... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I seem to be working my way through George the Star Takei? Trek cast. Yeah. I, I did both William Shatner and George Takei because I was raised on Star Trek. It was like yeah. a, it's an important part of my childhood. So anytime one of those guys comes to Australia, I'm like, get them before they die. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I miss Spock. Yeah. Get the rest before they die. Yeah, yeah. So, but... Really? But, too but, soon? Too, <laughs> yeah. too, too late is what it was for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, you don't even know when this show's going to be on air. Yeah. So it might be like three yeah. years from now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing that maybe not people don't know about those sorts of interviews is in most cases you walk into a room, the cameras are set up, you sit down, you've got five minutes and you've got to make something entertaining out of five minutes and that's the real challenge. And that's the challenge here. We've yeah. got a half an hour and we're trying to make something yeah. entertaining. <laughs> and you kill it half an hour. every bloody night. Thank oh, you well, very thank much, you very much. Sanders. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in that context, usually they've travelled halfway around the round, they're, they're exhausted. So I, I give them a pass. The worst ones have been people like, Brendan Fraser was really bad, but yeah. he was also drunk and he thought I was kidnapping him. Uh, <laughs> Why would he think you were what, is he just... Okay, so I was working for JCV on the ABC and they lined up this interview and I'm like, why are we talking to Brendan Fraser? I'm like, I don't know, it happened. So I was thinking, what are good things to do? And I found out that they took out kidnapping insurance on him on the first Mummy movie. Oh. I thought it'd be fun to kind of go in there and go, hey, do you know how much you're worth as a kidnap victim? He'd be like, I have no idea. And I'd be like, well, let's find out. Here's a newspaper, hold it up underneath your, your face and look at the camera and go, hi, my name's Brendan Fraser and I've been kidnapped by JTV. Me, as a television producer, thinking, great promo, that's gonna look fantastic. <laughs> I hadn't allowed for the fact that A, he was jet lagged, B, he had a bottle of scotch next to his chair. I believe, allegedly, I don't know. Um, and he just, you could see in his face this moment, of, he looked around the room and he realised that he didn't know anyone in the room. Uh. And there was like this flash where he was like, I think I'm actually getting kidnapped. <laughs> But, you, but how embarrassing would it be, though? You kidnap him, you go, I've got Brendan Fraser. Fraser they're like, I'm and not going yeah. to pay that ransom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's uh, paying that yeah, ransom? Yeah, you, you're stuck with him, man. Good luck yeah. with that. But, uh. you know, it, it, just to come back to the thing you were saying before, like, the, like it is hard to pass, like, Hugh Jackman. Like, Hugh yeah. Jackman, I've interviewed him, him and J.J. Abrams are the people I've interviewed the most, and Hugh Jackman is, like, the sweetest, loveliest, smartest guy who will talk about anything, yeah. uh, and he's distractingly good-looking. You're sitting there going, "That's not normal." Yeah, yeah. Uh, How does he, that uh, happen? He That's... doesn't return the calls here. <laughs> Hugh, I assume you're watching. You should do this show. Yeah. It's great. Wherever you are in the world right now. Yeah, I assume he's streaming it, right? Oh, of course, they all yeah. do. The big stars do. Yeah. Hey, um, now listen. We're going to do something, uh, something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to bring out our, uh, our voice impersonator. Uh, could you please put your hands together for Keith Scott, everybody? Hey! Keith Scott. Hey. Keith, welcome, Keith. Hello. Welcome, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Now, Keith does many, many uh, voiceovers and impressions. So, what I thought I might put you to the test tonight, Mark. Yeah. He's going to read uh, maybe a monologue or a line from a famous film. Oh, I like this. But <laughs> as a different character. So you have to pick the, the, pick the actor yep. and the movie. Okay? Right, and so they're two, two separate parts. things. Two separate things. Okay. So, so it's if, if, as if the wrong actor was cast in, in that movie, OK? Because exactly. that's never happened before. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> People being miscast. Yeah, never yeah. happened before. So, so oh, we'll, we'll, show, I'm, I'm not we'll, quite... we'll make these kind of easy for you because uh, you're, you're very knowledgeable and uh, I'm sure you'll get all of these. But uh, we'll start with... Um, this is... Um... Don't tell us what you're starting with. No, no, no. This is Darren. <clears throat> Darren's suggestion is like uh, we start off with... <clears throat> I'm Colonel Nathan R. Jessup, Commanding Officer, Marine Ground Forces, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. We follow orders, son. We follow orders or people <laughs> die. It's that simple. Yes. Are you clear, you snotty little bastard? Yes. It is Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, playing Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men. <laughs> you can't handle the crew! Perfect. This, this guy works better the shitter I am, doesn't one, it? One, it's one, better one. television oh, yeah. if I get it wrong, Num guys. Number two, number two. We'll keep these nice and tight. Okay. Uh, I know what you're thinking. 
<laughs> Did he fire six shots or only five? <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, in all this excitement, I've kind of lost track myself. But uh, uh, being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off. You're going you to just ask want to listen to it, don't you? you one know? question. Do I feel lucky? Oh, okay. Uh, well, do right. you, punk? <laughs> well, it's it's the best Sean Connery I've ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. Frankly. You're very, you're very kind, you're very kind. Frankly, <laughs> better than Sean Connery sounds. Um, well, and it is Dirty Harry. That's right. Dirty Harry, yeah. that's right, Magnum. Very good. Yeah, but you, okay. like, I realize the thing is, I realized that up until that last line, I'm like, I'm oh, monster this, I don't know. What well, we, we've kind of made it because you're knowledgeable, but try and just to put a tiny bit of uh, a question in it. Now, number three, number three. <clears throat> this one looks like. These, these walls have ears. <laughs> you, you, you said you wanted to know how to get Capone. <laughs> do you really want to get him? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? What are you prepared to do? <laughs> you you want to get Capone, here's how you get him. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago way and that's <laughs> how you get Capone. <laughs> <laughs> That, that is the sound of, of, of Elliot Ness before he banged Sun Yi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yes. Well, is that not, a very obscure, yeah. very obscure reference? Well, not Elliot Ness. No. No, no that was not... Costner. I, who did, who did Costner play? No, Costner didn't play Elliot Ness, did he? Yes, he did. Oh, he yeah, did? Yeah, no, I guess yeah. it is Elliot Ness. Yeah, so yeah. that's uh, The Untouchables uh, with, uh, with Woody Allen. Yes, yes. But, but who played the role that I just did with the, um, that's, oh. that's, that's the Chicago way, that's how you do it. Oh, right. It's, it's, it's <laughs> we got him, we got him. It. It, it it's Sean was, Connery. Yeah, it was the uh, Irish. The all right, fine, I'm handing one, back my movie guide for it. This one you're going to get okay, easier. Okay. Like, here we go. <clears throat> I don't know who you are. <laughs> and I don't know what you want. If you're looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have a very particular set of skills. <laughs> skills I've acquired over a long career that make me a nightmare for people like you. Have you got it yet? Please don't I, make No, it. but I'm not stopping this. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you let my daughter go, that'll be the end of it. I won't look for you, but if you don't, I'll look for you. I will find you and I'll f***ing kill you. <laughs> Billy Connolly should have starred in Taken. That's it, that's Come it. All right. He should have starred in Taken. Right. Final one now. This one might be a little tricky. This one's only like, um, <clears throat> you know, we're sitting here, you and I, like a couple of regular fellows. You do what you do, and I do what I've got to do. Ooh. And now that we've been face to face, if I'm there and I've got to put you away, I won't like it, but I'll tell you, if it's between you and some poor bastard whose wife you're going to turn into a widow, brother, you are going down. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know the line, the voice I'm completely stumped. Now, the voice, if you think of I haven't heard the name Obi-Wan Kenobi in a long, <laughs> long time. Which is good, because I was going as Kevin Rudd in my head, so... <laughs> no, so. no, it wasn't Kevin Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got... <laughs> You're amazing! Um, so we've got Alec Guinness and... Now, it's a it's a face-to-face, -face, and a very famous face-to-face -face in the movies. Oh, I, you know uh, what? It'd, I, be, it'd I, be one of those, like... This uh, would be the first time these two actors ever got face-to-face. -face. Can I just interject oh, with that? Oh, oh, it's Heat! Heat! Yes, it's Heat! Got it. yeah. It's Heat! And, uh, and, De Niro and, and the character I was doing... You gave me a was originally ...was originally Al Pacino saying... <laughs> but I'll tell you, if it's between you and me, and some poor bastard whose wife, you're going to turn into a widow, Brother, you are going down. And then De Niro goes, there's a flip side to that. Yeah. <laughs> Suppose you got me. You think I'm going to be beaten, huh? I am not going away, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well 
Well done. Uh, well done both Keith and Mark. You can pick up uh, Mark's book there again, Planet According to the Movies. Uh, check out all your stuff at markfinell.com. Uh, thank you very much for being on the show, Mark. The pleasure was entirely mine. And we'll be back after the break with a little bit more of Keith Scott. Uh, we, are, we are back with impressionist Keith Scott. I, tell you, that was a, I thought that was a very successful segment. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yes. Now, uh, He's very good, Mark. He's very knowledgeable. A lot of the voices now, because uh, <coughs> you know, the, the, some of the great actors with those voices have passed on. And, they have. And, and, um, and the newer generation now, there's a style of acting which is kind of underplaying. So you do get some really good actors like Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, but they don't yeah. have voices that you remember like... Uh, yeah. the, the more, uh, the older guys like, uh, well, like Sean Connery uh, yeah. or Michael Caine, you know, you just don't get it. <laughs> uh, the English, the English, uh, I guess, the accent is, is one that, uh, well, most of them, are, Americans have uh, got regional accents, regional, English are very yeah, the same. Right, yeah. um, and that, those actors, they said, uh, and even the passing recently of um, Alan Rickman. You, you look for characters like that these days, along with the Jack Nicholsons and people. Like, well, there's Ian McKellen, who's got that yep. great Shakespearean voice, it's like uh, uh, Gandalf the Grey, where he'd say, um, A wizard, a wizard is never late, Frodo Baggins. There are many magic rings in this world, Bilbo Baggins. Yeah. But Alan Rickman had that... Um, Turn to page 394. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, young... Potter, the difference between an animagus and a werewolf. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> and, uh, you miss characters like him. Yeah. You know, so. And, and that, you have used your voice in uh, in a few uh, few movies as well. Oh, yeah, you were yeah. in the. Uh, yeah. Uh, Probably uh, in one of Mark's worst of books, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I was um, the narrator in George of the Jungle, speaking of Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser, yeah. actually, yeah. So I'm yeah. the voice you hear all the way through it, and all the villains are looking up at him in the sky saying, you shut up, as I will not shut up. <laughs> yes, and... <laughs> and uh, and uh, also I was the voice of Bullwinkle J. Booth in Rocky and Bullwinkle. There you go, see? <laughs> I think t t t two, of, two of my two of my favourites have, uh, have got to be, uh, I guess, uh, your um, Eddie Murphy. Um, yeah, I loved you, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Actually, you know, I had a uh, one of the you said ones... Eddie Murphy, not Bill Cosby. Yeah. No, we we we. we... <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. One of the ones, because Darren had suggested, just in case uh, we ran into trouble on that script, uh, and I came up with, with a couple of alternates, and one of them was going to be um, Eddie Murphy as Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs. It, it, where he, he looks at... He looks uh, at do it, do it, do it. So Jodie Foster and says, uh, you're so ambitious, aren't you? You know what you look like with your good bag and your cheap shoes? You look like a rube. A well scrubbed hustling rube with a little taste. Good nutrition is giving you some length of bone, but you're not one more generation than pure white trash ideation style. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a great way to close the show. Please thank Keith Scott for me. Also, Mark Fennell's book. Thank you. Good night. We'll see you again.